Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a Dell G15 5520 Gamer. I'm going to show you how to get inside, access your fan, heat sink assembly, your CPU, that whole area. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip the computer over to access our bottom case screws. Now there's three screws here towards the left three screws toward the right of my screen, and these two down the bottom middle. After that, I would start up here near one of these corners with a small, flat, plastic pry tool. I say plastic because they tend to scratch your computer less than a metal one will. And starting in one of these corners, I would gently, slowly pry up this bottom panel from the rest of your computer. Now, you don't want to put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components, just keep it on the outside, go nice and slow. And if you get stuck in a section and you can't proceed anymore in that direction, go to the other side, start there and, and continue around. Once you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your computer projects, there'll be a link above. Also below in the description, it'll show you all the tools and supplies and accessories that I recommend for my viewers. Now, before I do anything in a computer, I always either remove or at least unplug the battery. Computers are safest to work on when as little power as possible is running through them. So I'll show you how to remove it and unplug it now. Now here's your battery down here. It's held down by four screws all along the top edge. And you can see them right here, M2X4. That's what kind of screw it is and the location with this uh, white arrow here. So you've got one here in this corner, one here toward the middle, one here toward the right, and then one up here in that corner. So that's how you would unscrew the battery. And then the battery plugs into the motherboard right here. Now, as with most cables and cords in a computer, try not to pull on the wires as much as possible. Try just to get it around the plug. Uh, now, this one was a little hard. There's a section right here in the middle. You'll see it on your computer where you can put a pry tool there and, and, and press it out, but those are only so effective. So unfortunately, what I would recommend is grabbing these cables as close to the port and the plug as possible and pulling a little bit while at the same time pushing out there and that's how I would get that battery plug out. Okay now unfortunately as you can see here there is no heat sink. Uh, it's actually on the other side of the motherboard. So yes we do have to remove the motherboard, unplug everything from it, flip it over. That's how we access our heat sink assembly, the CPU, that area. So kind of a pain in the butt but I'll walk you through all the things you have to unplug and how to do that. So first thing, I would remove your RAM. You don't have to remove it to take the motherboard off. I just like removing everything when I'm doing a motherboard replacement. Um, it limits the chances of, of things getting caught on stuff, ripping them out, damaging ports and plugs. Um, so to get your RAM out, they're held in by two spring-loaded metal arms on either side. Uh, you would gently pry those apart away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release. Sometimes it even pops up a little bit and you can grab it and slide it out, out of this port. So you have two sticks there. Uh, the way to get this RAM stick in afterwards is you would fit it in to this plug right there. And as you notice, there's a long section and a short section. So you can't put that RAM in upside down. It can only go in one way. You get it nice and flush and even. Make sure the gold section is nice and lined up as you can see here. Press down in the center and then those arms will latch onto it and hold it in place. You have your Wi-Fi card over here. That's held in by a single screw. Undo that screw and the Wi-Fi card can pull out of this port. Uh, then all you have left is your antenna wire snapped onto it. Those are just snaps. So you can just pull those right up and off of that card. And then to get the snaps back on, it is a little tricky if you're not used to it. They do have to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap back onto the Wi-Fi card. And they are sensitive enough where if they're not at the right angle and you apply too much pressure, you can damage them. So just be patient uh, getting those back on. You'll be able to do it. Here's your solid state drive. You have a screw here and a screw here. 
Uh, that will release this metal guard over the solid state drive. And then this is the screw that held the solid state drive in as well. So by releasing that screw, then you can pull the solid state drive out of this port here. And then we're going to go through and basically unplug everything else from the motherboard. You have these two screws here. Uh, this is what's holding down this plastic panel right there. So you're going to undo those two screws, and then you can get this plastic panel off from this end of the computer. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, wiggle it. Don't apply too much pressure like any panel in a laptop. You are strong enough to break it. Uh, but those are the only two screws holding that panel down. Once that panel has been removed, your computer is going to look like this. These are some more things that we want to unplug. You have this little metal guard up here, two screws holding it down. Uh, you have your power jack right here, two screws holding that down. And then it plugs into the motherboard right here. So you would take these grips on either side. You could use your fingernails or a pry tool, wiggle that right out of that port right there. And then we have a whole lot of other stuff that needs to come out. So on this fan, you have a screw right here. And on this fan, you have the screw right here. So after undoing those fans, this one plugs into the motherboard here, and this one plugs into the motherboard here. So again, those cords are very fragile. Don't pull on cords as often as possible. Uh, try to get your fingernails or a pry tool in each end of that to wiggle it out. Uh, same goes for this fan one there. You have your speaker wire here. These are a little easier. These grips are very large. You can definitely use your fingernails or a pry tool to get that plug out of the port. And then you have all your ribbon cables down here. These can be very tricky and these are very fragile um, and you don't want to break them. So here's how they work. On these ones right here, they have black clips on a white port and then the ribbon cable goes in under that black clip. The black clips operate like a book cover. So they're going to pop up. The hinges are on top. So you're going to put a small, flat, flat pry tool in under this clip and then gently pop it up like a book cover to release the ribbon cables. Those black clips are extremely breakable, and if you break them, you're probably not going to be able to find the correct replacement, which would mean you would need a motherboard replacement after that. So be very careful with those. This one's backwards. The black clip is on the opposite side, so you would open it from this side here instead of the ribbon cable facing side. But be very careful with any clips like those that you encounter in computers. And then you have another ribbon cable right down here. After that, it's pretty much, oops, I'm sorry, I forgot this LCD cable here. Uh, you would gently pry up this clear plastic tape uh, before you could get that LCD cable out of that plug. After that, you just have some screws. You have a screw down here on the motherboard, over here on the motherboard, uh, over here on this auxiliary board here, another one up there. Basically, again, go nice and slow, remove everything you can from that motherboard. After you get that motherboard off and flipped over, this is what the opposite end looks like. So you can see you have full access to your fans now and your heatsink assembly. So to get the heatsink assembly up, you have these two screws right here, these two in the middle, and these two on the right. So if you're here to clean out your computer, you have access to your fans and your heatsink assembly now. Um, if you're here to reapply thermal paste, you can. Just as a word of caution, whenever you're removing your heatsink for any reason, uh, whether you're replacing it or cleaning it, if your thermal paste or your cooling paste, if it comes into contact with air, then you have to replace it. Uh, you don't want to put it back down once that seal has been broken and it's come into contact with air. If you need help with that, I will have a video link at the end of this video. I'll also have the link below in the description. It'll be a tutorial on how to apply thermal paste correctly. It'll show you how to clean all the old stuff off. You don't wanna put new paste on top of old paste. And then it'll show you the right amount of new thermal paste to put down. Um, I guess last shout out, thermal paste is not all created equal. The cheaper stuff is cheaper and the more expensive stuff will do a better job at facilitating the heat transfer out uh, from your, your chip area out of your heat sink through the vent. So just keep that in mind when deciding what thermal paste to get. If you guys are looking for any of that thermal paste stuff, I will have that below in that link I told you about with all the tools and supplies for computer repair. There will be a couple options of thermal paste in that list. Um, also, if you're looking for fan replacements, or any sort of replacement or upgrade parts for this model computer, there'll be another link in the description and it'll have all of those, all the replacement 
and upgrade parts for this computer. So I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry it was such a pain in the butt getting in here. Uh, but yeah, that's how you would access your fan, your heatsink assembly, CPU, GPU area in the 5520. Thanks again so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and share if this helped you out, if you think it can help someone else out. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this, or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any of your future computer questions. I do try to answer all questions throughout my channel at least a couple times a day. Also, feel free to check out the related link section below in the description. From time to time, I do try to add things in there that I think will help you uh, with your general computer life, make it more productive, more enjoyable. So thanks again for watching everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.